Let's talk about uh, connected strain gauges to our test equipment. Uh, we have the sample that we mounted has a strain gauge mounted on it. You normally wouldn't do this for a tensile test, but for showing off the strain gauge, uh, we certainly should. This strain gauge is a quarter rectified. It has three connections, uh, two of which are tied together, and the third one, uh, the positive, onto the strain gauge. Now, when you get to MEC 130 and MEC 210, you will learn about the inner workings of the strain gauge. For mechanical purposes, you just need a reader to read that electronic signal. And this machine does that for us. What we do is we connect, according to the diagram on the back, it's a, it's a, remember a quarter bridge, so here's my connection over here on the left, and I can see that the lone side goes to the red, and the other two connect to the white and to the yellow. So we make that connection. We hit the amp and zero out the amperage. The gauge factor is the resistance of the strain gauge. It's normally around 2 or 1.99. Uh, this can be adjusted with the gauge factor here. Let me get my other hand to show you. And we can uh, turn that up and down a little bit. You can see. And then some fine tuning here. Normally these are 1.99. This particular batch. Like that. And that's our, our, our setting there. So coarse tune, fine tune. And then we hit run. And what we need to do is zero the strain gauge. Uh, because right now there's no load on it, so we want to indicate uh, that with a zero reading here on the scale. Again, coarse setting here. Notice I'll adjust 2K just by flipping that. So you coarse adjust and then fine adjust with the right. And this takes a delicate touch. And it's going to vary a little. You can't, you very rarely get it to zero. People walking around the room. And you're leaning on it. Yeah, leaning on it. Well, anything will give it a reading. Doesn't take much. That's pretty good. So now we're zeroed out. And what's going to happen is when we pull on this sample, that changes the wire thickness and should change the resistance and we get a reading that we can then convert into stress. This is strain and it's in micro strain. So if this reads 50, it's 50 micro strain. Let's see that. Let's come over here to the machine. I have manual control on right now. And all I can do, if I flip these single arrows left or right, it displaces roughly 5 mils. So I'll displace 5 mils. Let's go over and look at the machine. And we can see 83 or 82 micro strain. Remember, that's units of inches per inch. I'll do it again. Up to about 10. It's not perfect. It says 11. That's fine. So you record that value. You go back. You look at the strain gauge. You can see it's about 160 now. So the strain is going up. Now notice what happens if I go the other way. I'm going to go back to zero, and I'm going to go negative. I'm going to compress the sample. So I just compressed it by, and sure enough, it reads now minus 85. So the strain gauge works both ways. So it both compression and tension. And there we go. And in the experiment that we run with this setup, all you do is take your displacement up to about 10 mils up and then 10 mils down, and you record the recordings on each one, and then we will plot the stress versus strain curve and see how it compares theoretically.